All right, we're going to be talking about irony today. You've probably encountered irony a lot in your life, um, be it in movies or books or even in your own talking, but you probably didn't know what it was. Um, there are three main kinds of irony, um, and the first that we are going to start with is verbal irony. This is actually probably the one that you're most familiar with, um, basically, verbal irony is when you say one thing, but you actually mean another. Um, and so, a good example of that would be if you, say, walked outside into a thunderstorm, and you just looked around and said, what a nice day it is outside today. That would be verbal irony, because obviously it's not a very nice day. It's cold and nasty and windy and just not very pleasant. Um, or you could say, you know, this pillow is about as soft as a rock. Well, normally when you'd say something like that, you would be talking about how soft the pillow actually was, whereas in this case you're actually talking about how hard it is. Um, so from that last one, you might, you might have made the connection that this is very closely tied to sarcasm, they're a little bit different in that sarcasm is almost always used for ridicule of another person or thing, whereas verbal irony can be um, about anything. Um, sarcasm is almost a, a subset of verbal irony, but I'm sure you're very familiar with sarcasm and it's a very familiar concept. So if your parents came up and asked you how your day was and it had just been an awful day and you just said it was just great. That would actually be an example of verbal irony. So like I said, you've probably encountered this a lot in your life without even realizing it. The second major type of irony is known as situational irony and this one is a little more difficult to pin down but basically it's when you expect one thing, um, but what actually occurs is dramatically different and maybe even the opposite. Um, so, for example, if you're familiar with the story of The Wizard of Oz, the entire plot is built around situational irony. Think about it. Dorothy walks and goes on that whole quest just to try to get home, only to find out that all she had to do the whole time was click her heels and she would have been home like that. The Scarecrow, he went on the quest to find a brain without realizing that he was brilliant the whole time. Um, similarly, the Lion wanted courage and he found out by the end that he was already courageous, he just had to find it in himself. So, as you can see, there's all these things where they expected they expected to gain something when in fact they didn't need to gain it, so it was much different. Um, they didn't need to gain it because they already had it in them. Um, another instance of situational irony that you're probably reasonably familiar with is, I don't know if you've seen all the kudzu around the southeast, um, you know, that green vine that covers up trees. Um, it just sort of swallows everything. Well, that was actually originally brought in to, um, it was actually originally brought in to prevent erosion. However, it took over everything and killed off most of the trees and plants um, that it grew onto. And because of that, because those trees and plants died, we actually are having increased erosion since we brought it in. So we brought it in expecting that it would help us stop erosion with its roots, when in fact it killed all the things that already had roots and caused even more severe erosion. The last major kind of irony is known as dramatic irony. And dramatic irony is basically when an audience 
knows something that the characters in a movie or play or book don't. Um, so the classic example of this is Romeo and Juliet. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the story, but at the very end, Juliet has been put to sleep by a potion that puts her in so deep a sleep that it looks like she's dead. Romeo is in love with her, and he sees her, he thinks she's dead, so he kills himself, and then she wakes up and sees that he's dead, and she kills herself. So the whole time, we knew that Juliet wasn't, a, wasn't actually dead, but Romeo didn't, and so something awful happened between them. Um, another great example of dramatic irony is, if you guys like horror movies, um, you know how sometimes you'll be watching and one of the main characters will be walking through a creepy house and you can and he's going through a really dark, dark hallway with only a little candle so you can't see very much. And while he's walking, you see some you see a big scary monster um, walk up behind him, and you can see the monster, but he can't, and he has no idea that it's there. And you want to scream to him. You know, look out, there's a monster behind you. Um, that's a great example of dramatic irony because you know that the monster's there, but he doesn't. Um, and so those are the three major kinds of irony.